Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to show you how to use, how to get this moving. So at the moment this just moves freely. Which, if any mechanism worked like this, so like a swing obviously is a mechanism uh, and it moves freely and uh, moves with the weight of a person on it. But we want this to be powered using air. So we're going to use a syringe. So you need two syringes. The size of the syringe is up to you. Obviously the, the larger, the bigger volume. So that's up to you to um, explore. So you need two syringes. You need, depending on the um, syringe size, you are going to need some um, clear tube. This is three millimetres. So these um, particular syringes and tubes can be bought from many um, companies that supply technology products. So I need to connect that. So I need one. One syringe needs to be full of air and one syringe needs to be empty. So the first thing you might want to do is test if it works. So let's push that on. And then literally just testing it how well that air flows. And you can replace and fill that chamber with water, but you've got to be careful to make sure there's no air bubbles. And you'll notice that if you use water known as fluid power, also known as hydraulics, obviously in industry they don't use water, they use oil. Um, you'll notice the movement is a bit smoother. So there are different advantages to using air or fluid power. But obviously with using fluids like water or oil, it can get very messy. So for this purpose, I'm just going to stick with air to demonstrate this. So that's all set up. What we need to do now is we need to just take off the syringe and we need to connect the syringe to both the base of this here and the arm, which is going to be really tricky for me to show you. So if I show you there how that looks, so we're connecting it to the bottom here and it's also connected to the arm there. Okay, so we're ignoring this because this is this is where it's going to pivot. We want to connect it across here. So you need another skewer. You need to measure it and cut it so that we've got about 10 millimetres uh, protruding outside of the arm. And you need to place it into, and this is where you can experiment which hole. So I'm placing it in the third hole to this. I might change it afterwards depending on how well it moves. So now what you do need to do is this part of your syringe here, the end, needs to be connected to that stick. So the way in which you connect it to the stick, there's many options. So what I've done on this example here is I've drilled a hole. Now I'm imagining you've not got a drill um, at home. If you have, great, uh, use it safely. But if you haven't, you need to think about how you're going to fix that to that. So we could just try a blob of glue gun. But before we affix it, we need to make sure it's uh, attached to the bottom. Now, if I'm looking and evaluating that length now, I'm realising actually it will be better in the fourth hole. So again, this is for you to experiment with. Now, because I've changed lots of variables, literally changing it live so I want this to be fixed here like so I want that attached there so when it pulls it in it moves it like so so I am going to just experiment by gluing it actually to see if that makes it a bit quicker but I need to attach this bottom bit to the skewer so the way I'm going to do that I'm going to use the cable ties and I need a skewer so using cable ties Using cable ties, you are wrapping one cable tie around the um, syringe, like so, but not tying it too tight. Hang on a minute. So again, if you haven't got tight cable ties, maybe some string, or maybe just glue it. OK, 
Okay, I'm not tying it too tight because I'm then going to take another cable tie and thread it underneath. And that is what is going to wrap around the skewer. So, before I attach it to this skewer here, I'm just going to use a standard skewer just to get the right diameter. So, pull that. Not too tight. I'm going to leave that overhanging. I'm going to tighten that now. Okay, so I don't want that slipping off. And that's the problem, they do move up and down. So again, glue might be better. I'm going to attach that now to the skewer here. I'm just going to remove that. Place the skewer through there. Okay, which I actually might do here. There it goes. I need to trim that quickly. Just trim that there. There it goes. And then tighten that skewer. So let me just take that off to show you what I've done. See? So that is attached to that bottom skewer. So if I twist that and trim that, you can see that has been attached like so. Now, like I said, I'm going to give this a go at gluing. So I want that to go as tall as possible. So if I put a blob of glue on there, and the problem with gluing it, it's not permanent because you could pick it off, but a bit more permanent. So a blob of glue. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't. Right, we'll come up with a new idea. So, what I can do in a moment, while that dries, I can fix these pieces here to reinforce the arm, to make that more stable. And then we'll show you how it works. So what you're demonstrating when you're making this product is that you can measure and mark out, you can assemble products to make them move, which actually looks easier than it actually is. But it's all about getting your measurement right. So that arm there, that chamber is almost full of air. If I push that as high as it will go, I now need to add that chamber to it. Now remember, that chamber there is full of air. Yeah, this one is empty, and that's the way I want to keep it. Placing the other end of the tube onto the uh, syringe. Made my life very difficult now. Okay, I could have just emptied it. Didn't it move away, but never mind. There we go. And then if I pull that now, that should move. Okay? So that is your next process. So we've made the base. We've made a frame that rotates, which now I've attached that needs trimming. Not a problem. Keep your fingers away from the factors when you're cutting. There you go. And you've made, actually it worked way better than that one. Really impressed. So that's shown you that actually through prototyping and iteration, you as a designer and an engineer will always improve your skills and your idea and your way of thinking. There you go. Have a go. Okay, see if it works any better using fluid rather than just air. Okay, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy.